Why, good evening, party people. My name is Cameron, and after a little bit of a delay because of some internet problems and whatnot, it seems that we are here only just a tad later than 8 o'clock as per the usuals. But it is still around 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, and as such, it's cocktail time. Please take notice of the Canadian flag. Tonight's topic of discussion is whether wearing a Canadian flag is cultural appropriation. I have posted some guidelines on flying Canadian flags in the Discord server if you're interested in that kind of stuff. And it seems that for the most part, there are no guidelines relating to whether you can wear a Canadian flag. Now, I perused the internet and as it's such is prime day, I decided to determine whether or not I could procure for myself a proper Canadian flag tunic. And the answer is yes. You can buy pretty much anything on the internet. Why was I even questioning this to begin with? Would I actually buy it? No. I have a perfectly capable Canadian flag that uh, even my fiance was wondering, where the heck did you get that? Well, I think I got it from my fraternity house. What the context surrounding the, pro uh, the procurement was, I'm not exactly sure, but uh, I don't really think it matters. Why are we wearing a Canadian flag? Well, there's probably a variety of reasons, but the one that I chose is that we're making a Canadian-themed cocktail tonight. For no particular reason, I was attempting to figure out what kind of concoction that we would make tonight, and I don't remember whether it came from this head, or Anna's head, or other any other heads in the room. Melon heads, cabbage heads, whatever heads, uh, Pikachu heads behind the camera. Love you, Chonkachu. Um, but we settled on maple, and I was like, well, what can you put in maple? And I looked up in my little recipe book thing that I got on my phone, and there was something called a maple leaf. Um, but it wasn't exactly very, very cool. Apparently, I have made, personally in my life, the maple leaf before, and I have some notes on the maple leaf. The maple leaf, well, I don't have a source in here either, I do not know where it came from, so that's a slap on the wrist for me for not properly citing my sources or whatever. But the maple leaf it was apparently okay the last time that I tried it. My notes for the maple leaf as it was made prior is as follows. I made this drink with black velvet Canadian blend whiskey, fresh lemon juice, and Mrs. Butterworth butter rich syrup. Needless to say, it tastes like butter and lemon, and the bite of the whiskey really blends through. This is really enjoyable. The high fructose corn syrup in the syrup that I used balances with the acidity of the lemon very well. Unfortunately though, since I used that kind of syrup, there's the aftertaste that sticks around because I used that syrup. Next time, I definitely want to use some real maple syrup, and I think that'll taste really good. Enter, slash N, slash R, carriage return. Revision. The sour is completely overpowering. Something about the lemon juice is completely attacking my throat. The butter flavor is completely gone. It doesn't even taste like maple. I can barely taste the whiskey anymore. It just kind of tastes like warmly diluted lemon juice. So apparently, I don't know what state of mind I was in when I originally wrote this. I might have been drunk or something, and potentially was getting drunker as the more that I drank it. I'm not exactly sure, but that doesn't really seem like a very coherent recollection of what this drink actually was. So, I internalized, I thought, and I wonder, wow, you know, what else has in common of whiskey, lemon juice, and perhaps some sort of sweetening agent? And I was like, literally a whiskey sour. And I was like, okay, well, how about we just make a maple-themed whiskey sour, I guess. Instead of any sort of simple syrup you add into it, you use maple syrup. And depending on how you take your sours, you might add an egg white, you might not add an egg white. Honestly, I don't exactly know what the difference is, so I want to give that a try. So tonight, we're going to try, in the, in the theme of the cultural appropriation of Canadian culture, and I, I, I mean like, I mean like, like maple flags and whatnot and woodcutting and stuff like that, not any of the, the crazy stuff that people actually get freaked out about. And if you are getting freaked out about it, it's a joke, man. I love Canada. I've always wanted to go to Canada. I really want to go to Niagara Falls, Quebec, and I also want okay. to go to Toronto. Quebec. I learned that from a Canadian show. Whether or not it's actually correct or not is beside the point. I watched a show called Letterkenny. It's very, it's very Canadian, and they said that they love going fishing in Quebec, and that's the last sort of impression I'm going to try on that because that truly, truly would be cultural appropriation if I continue with that. Please excuse the mess and whatnot. If we have any internet issues, we can thank Comcast. We can also thank Comcast for bringing the internet back to us because I think I had the most pleasant chat with a Comcast agent that I've ever had in my life. They were very kind, they were very considerate, and they actually fixed the problem. Or I mean, I don't know if they actually fixed the problem, but they were kind enough to walk me through the process, be patient with me as I unplugged and truly plugged my router at least three or four times. It was wild. If anybody out there has an XB6-T Xfinity router, and you're wondering why the hell are the lights blinking not only orange, not only yellow, but also green? 
you done fucked up. There's something wrong with your router. So they have to send what they have called advanced signals to be able to fix that. The internet came back on, the light was white. I was like, oh boy, internet actually? Just kidding. I unplugged it one or two more times and then it came back online literally two minutes after we're supposed to get this thing kicked off. So the delay, blame Comcast. The fix, blame Comcast. Honestly, nothing is good or bad in this world, only some sort of gray line in between. And honestly, I feel like I'm riding that gray line right now. Let's get things started. We are going to make what I'm calling a maple leaf sour. I'm not gonna call this original. You can, anybody can do a spin on a whiskey sour. And it is going to use Canadian whiskey, lemon juice, actual maple syrup, compared to also some, I have some fake syrup here too. It's Mrs. Butterworth, it's Anna's syrup, but she doesn't know I have it yet. Although I did just say it out loud. Well, she can hear me, she absolutely can. And now I'm gonna also do it with and without an egg white. Now technically, if I did this always, I would be making four whiskey sours. I don't want to do that. I don't want to make one, I, w I don't want to do real maple syrup with the egg, fake maple syrup with the egg, and then the same two options, but without the egg in it. That would be four different whiskey sours, and I don't think I have enough whiskey for that. Although, I did bring down two bottles of whiskey. One's a nice rye, one's Canadian. If we added that other dimension, there would be multiple different iterations of Canadian maple leaf whiskey sour, whatever that'd be out there. Although it becomes significantly less Canadian because, to my knowledge, Old Forester rye whiskey, an excellent whiskey, is, um, it's from Kentucky. I was gonna say, it's not from Canada, it's from Kentucky, unless there's a Kentucky Canada, and if there is, it's not that Kentucky. It is most definitely the one here in America. Also, I don't know if anybody, if anybody out there is breasturally inclined, and by what I mean by that is you actually have memory glands that extend beyond your chest, um, and you've worn like a dress like this where it kind of like flips in the front. How do you keep those up? I don't, I don't know how you do it. It's probably because I'm not very well endowed myself, but I had to use this little ribbon to keep this thing up here, and um, I just noticed now you can't really see them, but there's a bunch of crocodile clips holding this thing in place. It's not really a dress. It's actually a flag. Anyway, let's get things started, shall we? I am gonna first make a, yeah, we're gonna do it. We're gonna do a nice one for, no, we're gonna do the not so nice one first. Actually, we're gonna make it all at the same time. I got a couple of shakers over here. Let's see how we can make that work. Let me grab, ooh, I have the, I don't wanna use the plaid shaker, because if I use the plaid shaker, then it's gonna get everywhere like last time. I love this, I love this thing. I love the plaid shaker, but it will not stay together. It's such a beautiful shaker. I love the way this thing looks. And also, I just noticed there is, there's no rubber on this. That was in the dishwasher. I think it's the same. So now it's also broken. Oh well, that makes me sad. But only, only a tad. Only a tad bit sad. That kind of rhymed. Of course, love that. Uh, so I'll have two shakers over here, and I'll put one. Hmm. The Mrs. Butterworth edition thing. That'll, that'll come later. But for now, I think we'll do one with egg white, one without egg white. Real maple syrup, real Canadian whiskey. That's, that's, that's what I'm choosing to do. So that's what we're going to do. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is find your measure and majigger. I have one of my thing over here. And you are going to, we're not going to add, we can add ice to one, the one without the egg white. We'll just do that afterwards. I think it's easier that way. We need one and a half ounces or about 44 milliliters of Canadian whiskey if you've got it. I don't know if there's any particular difference in flavor between a Canadian whiskey and a not so Canadian whiskey, like one from Canadian Kentucky. Kentucky, Canada? I don't know. Um, but yeah, that's this is what I have. I've had this black velvet in my collection for quite a while, and I really like it. Um, once upon a time, and I might have been inebriated, I said it actually kind of tastes a little bit like make maple syrup. I might have been inebriated, high, or somewhere in between. Not a very healthy thing to do, by the way. And I'm pretty much almost out of it. I brought it to, uh, this is one of those bottles that, because it's like a cheaper kind of whiskey, I'll usually bring it to parties and stuff with me, because when everybody's gathering, and people bring their white claws, or their trulies, or their mixers and stuff, somebody's got to bring the liquor, and that somebody is usually me, because I have a vast collection of it. I used to have, like, a picture of my collection, but it's, it's, it's grown since then, considerably, and uh, I can't wait to move it to the next place. That, that is going to be a whole shipment of things that we just, I bring from one apartment to the other. It's going to be a couple of shipments of all of my liquor bottles, because I'm not going to carry all of those at once. So now, now that you've got your Canadian whiskey, yeah, it's black velvet. It's cheap, but uh, it's good. Aged three years, after perfecting this recipe, his recipe and maturing the distinct blend in oak barrels, master distiller Jack Napier drew a glass, reveling in the taste. He pronounced it black velvet, epitomizing this the smo this smoothest of blended Canadian whiskeys. Blended meaning that it came from a couple of different distilleries, a couple of different. There's a proper word for it, but like there's mixtures that actually become the whiskey and you can take different types of whiskey and blend them together. I think single malt, 
whiskeys would be only from one, blended would be some sort of combination of all the others and whatnot, you know? That's just how it is. And it gave me the little horns in the background, so I'm gonna give those horns right back. Hi, babe. Bye, babe. Go have fun doing whatever it is that you're doing over there off camera where nobody can see you except for me. Got you. Got you. It's a secret to everyone. Tell no one. The next ingredient that we're gonna need is lemon juice. Specifically half an ounce for each. Um, I have lemons. Let's get some lemons in here. Um, we actually wondered whether or not I had enough lemons previously. Um, we had some lemons used in other episodes, and they were still in the refrigerator. And my goodness, they're still squishy and not moldy, which means they still got some juice in them. And if they still got juice, they're right for the juicing. So let's try to get half an ounce of lemon juice out of these. Technically, it's a full ounce, but I'm going to measure them one at a time. I'm going to take this book off the table. I'm a little scatterbrained today. I often am. We're attempting to uh, optimize on that process, but uh, I'm not incredibly good at that. Uh, it's tough. To, it's tough to do when your face looks blue all the time because of this lighting thing we got over here. Unless I go like right up here, my face looks very blue, and uh, I'm aware of that. <laughs> the lighting setup is not correct. I'm aware of that. All right, let's try to see. This was the half a lemon that I turned into a couple of wedges. Like, mm, let's just not describe how long ago that was. Can we get a half an ounce out of it? I think we can. If we believe in ourselves, but only if we believe in ourselves, we'll be able to squish this much juice from the lemon. And it seems like we're close. We are close. We are not quite at a half an ounce. It's more kind of like, um, let's say if a half an ounce is two fourths, or let's say four eighths, I'd say this is three eighths of an ounce. Um, with my with my expert engineering eyes and brain, I would say exactly that's what that sound like is in there. Um, so I need a little bit more. So I have the remnants of another lemon. I'm just going to cut it. I guess I'll try to give it a little... There's a trick, supposedly, that you can get more juice if you kind of massage it a little bit first. Personally, I think it just makes a mess. But then again, I'm doing it after I cut it open, and I do not think that's how the pros do it. I'm not a pro. I'm just a hobbyist. Anybody who calls me a pro is subjectively wrong, not, especially at this stage. I don't even know what I'm talking about. Am I even old enough to drink? I am. I'm 24 going on 25. Maybe I'm 24 going on 30. I don't really know. My brain sometimes tricks me. Half an ounce, or about 15 milliliters of lemon juice. Uh, if you're making two, you're gonna need a full ounce there. Like me, it's an experiment. We're trying to see if... Honestly, what I'm attempting to, to determine here is whether or not the egg white really adds the kind of balance that I'm looking for. Um, I'm just curious. And honestly, curiosity is, uh, is how we roll, dude. I do things because I just want to, you know? It's a, I'm a free spirit, that's what they say free spirit in life. And you know, I was thinking the other day, what would I do if everything in my life completely fell apart? And uh, basically that's the, the question of if your partner leaves, they die for some, some catastrophic event, uh, I was considering what my life would be without Anna and I was actually very sad thinking about it. But the answer would be, I would probably live off the grid. If I, if I didn't have my dearest with me, if I didn't have like the people who are important to my life and my support group, I'd probably go in the middle of nowhere, figure out how to set up enough solar panels to allow me to live my life and stream indefinitely, and uh, that's what I'd do. I'd become a little hermit like that, inspired by the other great hermits of our age. Um, I just, uh, I think it's a nice idea. Honestly, I'm, I'm the kind of person who like, if I had it my way, everything would be a hell of a lot slower, things would be a whole lot less stressful and a whole lot less loud, which I think is a little ironic because I myself can, I would consider myself a rather loud person. Um, I can scream very loud, although you won't tell. I think I have a limiter on this microphone, so even if I yelled right into it, I don't think you would be able to tell. I don't really want to test that because then I'd break my voice for later. And as, as I know, as you know, I try to, I try to do voice acting for this stuff not very good. Certainly not professional there either. I don't think I'm a professional anything. I'm not a professional voice actor. I am not a professional mixologist. I'm not a professional engineer. I mean, technically, what is a professional? Is it just somebody who's been in the field long enough? Because if so, I am not that. Is it somebody who gets paid enough for what they do? In that case, I guess I'm a professional engineer. I have the degrees, but like, if somebody called me a professional, I'd be like, <laughs> no, there's so much I don't know. But like, I guess you don't need to know it all either. Oh, I just noticed my, uh, my, my fancy Joe's Crab Shack shaker is cracked in all kinds of ways. I just noticed how cracked that is. Wow. That is like, you see the cracks in there? I think it's like really, really cracked. Wow. I had no idea. Oh, it's made of 
and buy stuff. I could probably print a better one. Speaking of which, when we get to the end of the cocktail, I did print something specifically for this. While I was struggling with attempting to get the internet online, I actually did, um, I actually, I actually was printing some things for it. I thought to myself, how do you garnish this thing? And I came up with an idea. Stick around to the end if you're interested. It's, it's nothing Marvel, so, like, you're not gonna learn anything from that. There's really no reason to stick to the end unless you want to. And if that's what you want to do, please do. We appreciate it. I appreciate your company. And if you don't want to, allow this to just be the place where you get off of the train. This is a train ride. You never have to get up anywhere. There is no destination. You can hop off whenever you want to. There's no pressure. Speaking of pressure, I think you need pressure to create proper uh, maple syrup. Now, I used Canadian whiskey. I'm calling this a Canadian-themed cocktail. It's because it has maple syrup. It's not because the maple syrup has been sourced from Canada. I've never been to Canada yet. I've always wanted to go to Canada, and I wasn't about to pay for the shipping costs of real Canadian maple syrup, although I probably could have found it from the store. But the next best thing, I think, in my opinion, is locally sourced maple syrup from the closest maple syrup producer to me, which happened to be up in Vermont, and I found Vermont pure maple syrup. State of Vermont, all natural, wild-crafted, nutritious, and 100% pure. It's the, uh, it's the dark color with robust taste. There's a couple different types out there. My brother informed me that there's like lighter blend, there's like lighter versions, and there's darker versions, and they have a slightly different taste in them. I went to Whole Foods one time, and I was trying to find maple syrup to buy, not this stuff, not the stuff from Vermont, just whatever I could find on the shelves. And I remember... I don't know whether I started the conversation or somebody else did, but I was talking about like, what kind of maple syrup do you get? And the woman was like, oh, the darker you get, the better. And I was like, I appreciate that attitude. And for that reason, I'm gonna get the darker one. And uh, although I don't really have the taste buds to be able to distinguish the difference between what light tastes like and what dark tastes like, I think intuitively I like darker stuff, I like darker roast coffees. I like, I think I like darker maple syrup. I don't know, I'm not a maple syrup connoisseur. So we're just gonna go with whatever we have. Now, maple syrup, in this case, we'll be put into both of our glasses in the proportions of about a half. So, about half an ounce or about 15-ish milliliters of maple syrup in one glass and maple syrup in the other. It can probably be a little viscous because it is like a, you know, confectionery syrup and whatnot. And if you want to get a more, if your maple syrup is like too viscous, then what you can probably do is you can add a little bit of water to it put that thing on a little simmering heat in the stove and it'll flow a lot more easy. That's essentially how you make honey syrup. You just take honey, you add it to water, you heat them up, you cool it back down, and now, lo and behold, your honey is uh, less viscous than it was previously. Just a little just a little tidbit of information there. Now, I found too, depending on what kind of syrup that you use, because I do remember a little bit about making this cocktail the first time with Mrs. Butterworth um, maple syrup. I don't think it's maple syrup. It's Aunt, oh, this is Aunt Jemima actually. Butter rich syrup, natural butter flavor with other natural flavors, contains no butter, contains absolutely no butter. Butterworth, she still exists and she's in my pantry. Um, and, and she gets to be let out every once in a while because if we just kept uh, uh, Jemima in there all the time and never let her have any air, then that would be, that, that wouldn't be very good now, wouldn't it? Gotta, you gotta let the Jemimas of the world let, um, have some air. Anyway, odd analogies and stuff. So now that you've added your Canadian whiskey, your potentially Canadian maple syrup, mine's from Vermont, and definitely not Canadian lemon juice. How about I take the lemons all the way up down from Canada? I don't think it has any merit there. And uh, you're gonna shake them together. Now, being that this is kind of a, this is a sour, then I'm inclined to think that you should also add an egg white. I'm curious to see what it tastes like either way, so this cup is not gonna get an egg white. And this one will get an egg white. When you do anything with an egg white, usually what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to emulsify that egg. So you take it and you shake it without any ice first, a dry shake. And then after you kind of let that, let those ingredients kind of get to know each other, then you add the ice back and then you do the big, the big old shake thing there. And that's usually how that works. So let me grab an egg from my cooler. I have a couple of them. Don't know where they came from, but I found them in the fridge. So I'm guessing somebody bought them once upon a time. It's a very good thing. And I actually have, this just makes it easier for me. I'm lazy. This is an egg yolker. It catches the oak. It catches the yolk and it lets the rest of the egg fall right in. So here's the glass I'm trying to put it in. I place my egg yolker apparatus there and then I do a little crack that egg out open and uh, just kind of crack it on top. I'm not a very good egg cracker to be honest. And I do have a, I have a thing on standby thing on standby. What thing on standby? Please describe the thing on standby. The thing on standby would probably be a rag. I have a rag on standby. I do, I do, I do. All right. What do we got? All right. So as you can probably tell, I've got my egg white very slowly. Oh, it's actually uh, leaking yolk into my thing. That's unfortunate. Well, that's sad and disappointing. I... 
I'm very sad about that. I'm gonna throw this in a mixing glass that I have on standby. It's the trash container. That makes me sad. Oh, I can't believe we got some egg white in there. That is so sad. Oh. Oh, we're gonna try it with a little bit anyway, because I don't have enough Canadian whiskey to do this again. Actually, you know what? I got a little Forrester. Let's make it a little bit different. Let me do a little cleaning activity on my uh, on my little yoker over here. I need some water. Got some water. Clean things off a little bit and see if I can get a better thing on there. I didn't even notice that the, uh, the yoke cracked. It makes me very disappointed. That's so sad. That's so sad. This is actually water. It was not rum. Some would call that unfortunate. I'd call it utilitarian. You can't just douse everything in rum. I mean, you can, I guess, but I don't know why you'd want to. Um, so yeah, that's that's kind of sad. I'm curious though. I don't think it was that much yolk in there. Now, that's the thing. Like, if you're serving for somebody else and they will ask something with egg white in it, you probably don't want to give them anything with egg yolk in it. That's not what they ordered. However, it's just it's just me at my personal bar, so I'm not really I'm not afraid of this drink anymore. I'm considering the idea of just doing it again, but I hmm. I'm gonna just go with it. I don't think it's a problem. So if you do get a little bit of yolk in your glass, I mean, it might still taste pretty good. Oh, for all I know, it's accidents like these that very well may lead to new flavor combinations that people have never heard of before. Um, I mean, people have definitely heard of egg yolk plus egg white. Um, so that's not very new, but in a cocktail, put it together. I don't know, man, I don't know. I'll add a little bit more extra syrup to that one to balance out the yolk, I guess. It wasn't the whole yolk, just part of the yolk. It's made my cutting board very, very dirty. I'm gonna give that a quick rub down too. This this rag is now going to need a deep clean, and uh, I guess so will the table. But that's okay. Accidents happen, and um, sometimes those accidents get to continue living on in the world. Honestly, a great thing. A great thing. And this accident, you're my happy little accident. And, and although I may be a little not so happy right now because of it, we're gonna, we're gonna make it work anyway. Please excuse me if I pull my Canadian tunic up, I suppose. So now that you have your egg in one glass and not egg in the other, we're gonna do a dry shake on this guy, the one with the egg. Um, let's see, I need my top of my glass. I need my top of my shaker. And we'll do a little dry shake first just to get everybody to know each other. And then we'll put some ice in it and we'll finish the job. Now with a dry shake, just be very careful. You don't have to be super crazy about it. Um, and if you are, then you'll do shit like this will happen and you get stuff over the little good place. I'm making a total mess today. I thought I had this pretty tight. And I didn't actually have it very tight. But it's okay. It's okay. I'm making it work. It's okay to make messes. We're making happy accidents. It's fine. It's okay. I'm not a mess. You're a mess. No, but it's okay to be a mess. It's okay. I've made a mess. But that's fine. I've described already how fine that is. So let's not question that any further. Now we need to add some ice to it. To really get to know each other. This got a little more messy than I anticipated it to. I've actually written, it's, I don't want my rings to get all sticky and stuff, so I'm gonna put them to the side and hopefully will not forget about them as I clean myself up over here. For all the cocktail purists out there, this is not the right show for you. If you came to watch somebody just kind of mess around and stuff and just try new things and fool around like the young adult that he is, then you did come to the right place. And perhaps you can't even drink alcohol, in which case, this is apple juice that I put an egg in. Does it taste good? I don't know. I guess we're gonna find out. All right, now I'm gonna ask him, ask him, ask him, ask him, ask him a question, they say. I will put some ice in there. So let me go grab that ice. I usually do one big cube and a couple small cubes. I don't know what the method is behind it. I don't know why. I didn't do the studies. Somebody else did. I just take their word for it. When science says do it this way, I'm like, all right. Uh, if, if people who know science say do it this way, I'll be like, okay, maybe I'll try. But uh, perhaps not. I'm a very slightly... I don't want to make another mess. Not another mess. Okay, sweet. Not another mess. <laughs> trying as hard as I can to put the ice cubes into the liquid. And to be honest, what I should probably be doing is um, putting it in the other glass if I had one. And I'll put it in that one. Now that I got the big cubes in there, we'll put that back. Put a couple of small cubes. We'll see what happens. Okie dokie. Get the small cubes, put them in the glass. It's easy, it's wonderful. It's cocktails or apple juice plus egg yolk. You decide, it's whatever you want it to be. I mean, honestly, live your own reality. This is just mine, it doesn't have to be yours. Your reality can be whatever reality that you want. We'll see about that. Okie doke. Now that I got my small ice cubes in there, I think we'll be okay. Oh my goodness gracious. 
I keep getting calls from number. I do not know what the calls are related to. It very well may be related to my service, but they will have to leave a voicemail after the tone and leave me and I will get back to them as soon as I can because I am indisposed right now. I'm busy right now. It's not a number that I recognize, so I don't need to. This is my time. This is my time right now. This is my time to make cocktails and uh, none shall bother me except for you if you'd like to. You, you can bother me. I appreciate being bothered by the people who are in the party. Even if you're not in the party, the party is a very vague and abstract concept. Anyway, enough of that babbling. Let's actually shake the cocktail up together and see what happens. This one is without any egg white. There's no egg white in it. There is also no egg yolk in it. If you did have egg yolk in it, it'd be a mistake like me. And I asked, honestly, I think the reason why this is breaking is because I have really giant ice cubes in it. And if I shake the shit out of this to the point that it breaks them, that's just how it'll be. Honestly, if you use your if you use your tools to the point where they break, then that was a good tool. It, it served its purpose. This actually sounds like it could very well break by doing that. Because you can go everywhere. Okay. Okay. It hasn't the seal has not been broken. That's that's a good thing. Alright, now let's um pour the ice cubes in as carefully as we can. That was not super careful, but the seal has been made. R, 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 the seal speaks. Now we'll shake it. All right. It's still a little sticky from the mistake from before. That's okay. I wanna, <laughs> I wanna wipe the gunk off of my towel. I'd rather not wipe that gunk off on the, the Canadian flag. I think it might be bad enough that I'm wearing it. I mean, no disrespect to Canada. I think I love Canada. Although I honestly don't know enough about Canada to have a proper opinion of Canada. I think I know some people who are Canadian or Canadian adjacent. And uh, to my knowledge, I like every single one of them. So all my Canadian friends out there, I like you, I think. Pretty sure, I definitely do. Why would I have a reason to hate you? Unless you're a murderer, because if you are a murderer, you didn't murder me or anybody I'm close with, I don't think. So I guess we're on stable ground right now. Just like, give back to society in the ways that you took from it, you heathen. Any case, now that we have things shaken up, we need some glasses to put them in. And um, what kind of glass do I want to put it in? I don't know, I don't know. I was inspired to put them in snifters earlier. And uh, I have a tiny snifter and I have a big snifter. Technically, the one with the egg yolk in it, egg white, it's supposed to be an egg white, the one with the egg in it, technically has a little bit more juice in it, but it actually might have a little bit less because of the liquid that I fell out of it. Um, but I'm gonna do the big one because it's a bigger deal than the other one. And that's what I'll do. I am gonna take my strainer and double strainer, and we're gonna double strain out the, the egg one because we don't really want eggy bits in there. Um, let's put up the little display. Do we want to watch this thing be kind of uh, poured into a glass? That's part of the entertainment. Let's do that. Let's set up the yoga blocks. It's all DIY. Cocktails are your kind of do it yourself. Do it your DIC. Do it your cocktail. Yeah, we said that correctly. Here's your glass. There's your close up. That's not your shaker. This is your shaker. The one with the egg white. Now, if it has egg white in it, probably going to have a little crema at the top, a little bit of froth, that's what they say at least. It is looking a little opaque, probably because of this mistake from earlier, but that's okay. I'm okay with mistakes. Mistakes were made to happen. Honestly, I think they could probably use an ice cube on the inside, so I am going to add an ice cube to that after I put some things in there properly. I put down there. Don't need that strainer again. Let's grab a big ice cube. I think a big ice cube will actually fit in there, um, and if it don't, then uh, I guess we'll shave it until it does. We're all about ingenuity. Will it fit? No, it does not. Okie dokie, I'm gonna shave this ice cube until it do fit at the cutting block that has been placed um, conveniently right behind the block. I've never cut ice before. Should I even? Should I even? Should I odd? If I shave it enough, that's kind of working. You gotta just shave the ice. That, that kind of works. I don't know if it'll work the way that I want it to. That would take or ever. That would take five ever. I wanna put that back in the cooler. I'm not gonna worry about that. I'll just use tiny, tiny little cubes. Tiny little cubes, tiny little cubes. Put them in the glass. What do they do? They make, they, they add volume and stuff. They kind of make a little plopping sound. That's cool too. Oh, and they sound wonderful. There's something about the sound of ice cubes just kind of cracking in a glass. I love that. That is way too yellow. That is not normal. That's okay. Let's add more maple syrup. It's so viscous. It's still at the bottom of the straining majigger. Great. All right, we'll put that to the side. We'll put the tiny other snifter up there with the 
This one doesn't need to be double strained actually because it doesn't actually have any egg in it. So let's just let's just do it. The regular maple leaf, the not so sour leaf. I don't know if maple leaves are actually sour. They're probably not. And that has a much more excellent color. And I see a seed in there because the filter on this thing is actually terrible. This is, this is terrible. Thanks, Joe from Joe. Joe from Crab Shack. Joe's Crab Shack. Crab Shacky. Shackalacka laka. Indeed. So now. I have a couple more ice cubes. Uh, this is less liquid? I don't know. I'll add a couple more there. One definitely looks better than the other. One probably tastes different than the other. For now, a different reason than what I had originally anticipated. So, uh, that's just how it is. That's just how it be. That's okay. I'm okay. You're okay. We're all alright. We're all alright. We're all alright. Yeah. One right next to the other. Isn't that pretty? What an interesting juxtaposition there. I have one more thing that I want to add to this before we call, call it photo time. Not photo time yet. That comes at the end. So the other thing that I was thinking of is how do you garnish a cocktail like this? And I think it would be perfect if I had a maple leaf, but I don't actually have a maple leaf. I don't have a maple leaf or anything in this apartment. The other idea that I had was like, so... Usually, one of the ways that you can serve absinthe is you take a little absinthe spoon, where I happen to have over here, you put it over the top, just like, just like so, and you would put a sugar cube on top of it, and you would dab, drip by drip, water on top of the sugar cube until it, you know, disappears, it dissolves, and falls into the absinthe. And it makes a really, really cool looking, like, effect. It's really awesome looking from what I've been told. And I'm sure it tastes great, but I don't have any sugar cubes here. Then I thought, oh no, it'd be really cool if I had those like little brown sugar candies that are in the shape of maple leaves, which would have been perfect, but I don't actually have any of those. When we picked them up from Vermont where we got the maple syrup, we wound up eating them all. Huh, who knew? It tastes so damn good. Why wouldn't you eat them? And so we had none left. But otherwise, that would be an amazing idea. And I feel like it would make things even sweeter. You may even need less, uh, brand, uh well, less maple syrup in there that's your thing because it'll have like some brown sugar in there and that would probably taste sound good pretty cool too cool if you did like a like a brown sugar simple syrup but again i don't have any brown sugar so missed opportunities i suppose <laughs> thank you me for disappointing myself although i'm sure there are plenty other things that i could be disappointed at but ah uh, not to worry i still wanted to garnish this so i decided to do a little googling and to determine what else canada is known for and at least according to uh, a google search canada is apparently known for their apple exports and so i thought hey why don't we make an apple in the shape of a maple leaf and so what i did right before the stream is i booted up the 3d printer because i didn't i don't conveniently have any maple leaf shaped cookie cutters and i printed some maple leaf print uh maple leaf shaped cookie cutters to think that maybe if i cut an apple thin enough that i'd actually be able to make some imprints and put them in the cocktail glass so that's the plan that's what we're gonna try to do i uh and i went to the store earlier and grabbed a pink lady apple at my request apparently they only had one and this is the pink lady apple i have been informed that the inside of a pink lady apple is pink just like the inside of a pink lady technically on the inside of every single lady that i'm aware of we are pink on the inside because on the inside we are dark fleshy pink and various other shades of pink brown and red i suppose because there's a whole lot of blood in there and so i want to know whether or not this thing is actually pink on the inside so because i have to move this very wicked rickety rickety table I am going to put my glasses to the side so that I don't make things fall over. Would not be the first glass that I've broken using this table. That's why we have a replacement one, which can only be used in the new apartment because it's way too big for this one. I'm going to try to cut this and get a cross section of it and see whether or not it's pink on the inside. Also, I'm curious to see how a, a pink lady tastes anyway. The, the fruit. The fruit, I mean, of course. This is a very, very thick apple. So let's see if I can actually cut, cut through it without hurting myself. Cutting through the center, through the center, trying to. I'm going to do this very carefully. At least I'm trying to. If I cut myself, then I prove myself wrong. But it's okay. We have first aid in the other room. I just have to go off camera just for a little bit to uh, repair myself. This is not a very straight cut. That's okay. Some of the best people aren't even that straight anyway. Come on. There we go. All right. So it is uh, definitely not pink on the inside. This is a pink lady apple. It is not pink. Not pink at all. But that's okay. Uh, that was just me attempting to think that maybe it would be pink uh, for the best possible chance of something that is easily visible from inside of a cocktail glass. So being that it's not pink, that's fine. How does it taste, actually? It's leafy and sweet. It tastes like the entire apple tree. I like that. 
Let's try to get a nice cross section of it. That's the attempt at least. I'm gonna try as best as I can to get as thin a slice as I can. And the idea is to be able to get two of these slices, but I'm not sure if I'll be able to accomplish that. We're just trying whatever we can do here. Eh, you know, thought of this on the fly. I think I thought it'd be cool, you know? All right, rickety rockety table, that's fine. So I got a nice little cross section there. I'm gonna need another one because I have two cocktail glasses. So let's try to do another one. I don't like cutting in this orientation. I, I do not like cutting in this orientation. I'm kind of afraid of knives, to be honest. Knives and fire kind of freak me out. Ah, for reasons like that. Oh, cool. I cut myself off an apple slice. Not bad. Maybe I take the other half of the apple. Oh, because I took a bite in it. That's fine. I don't need the entire apple. Let's try this again. Carefully. Oh, maybe that was a better way. Instead of chopping, we seesaw it. That was perfect. Man. These perfect... These perfect apple slices. That's beautiful. Could it be prettier? Sure, but so could I. But nobody's faulting me for that. I'm gonna put these away, put them down there next to the other bits and carcasses of the other ingredients. And now, what I'm gonna do is I have one tiny glass and I have one big glass. So I'm gonna put one tiny and one big. And uh, hopefully the printed pieces don't actually fall apart because they are very, 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 very wobbly. They're very springy. PLA is not a very taut material, uh, but that's what I had to print with. And I don't know if it's technically food safe, so maybe you shouldn't be printing these at home unless you had like a food safe thing, but it was the, it was what I had to work with. So I went with it. So let's give it a try. I don't plan on continuing to use this, nor do I plan on using it in like any sort of like professional context. I'm serving it to myself. It's a one-off thing. I don't think there's anything too bad about that. Now, you know, some would say like, oh, it's just a one-time thing. Don't worry about it for things like, I don't know, using cyanide or whatever to clean your dishes and stuff. No, don't ingest that. That's bad. I think there is a permissible level of PLA that I can have around my apple, and that's okay. So it didn't actually go all the way to the other side because this isn't a very tall um, thing, but I wonder if I peel it up from around on the sides, whether that'll, that'll work for me. I kind of peel it off the side. Oh, that's perfect. That's perfect. Let me try that. Yeah. All right, that is working exactly the way that I would hope it to. All right, here we go. Little, little maple leaf as it becomes disconnected from the rest of itself. There we go. And now I just gotta push it out from the, push it out. That's all I gotta do. It's not that bad. That'll do a little bit better though. Let me put it in optimal uh, separation position as opposed to where it was before. All right, all right. It's not the worst looking thing, it ain't the best looking thing, but it is a thing, nonetheless. And I'll just kind of pop that out. Yeah, that's a maple leaf. It's not that bad. Not that bad a maple leaf, if I do say so myself. We'll put that off to the side, and then let's, let's do it again. Let, let's do it smaller this time. Is it even worth it? Should we do the smaller one? I feel like I should just do another big one. I printed the smaller one just in case I couldn't get through the apple, so that was just kind of a, uh, just in case it didn't work anyway. And of course, if you have snacks, the chef gets to eat them. And I am the chef of mixologist in the room. That's halfway between chef and mixologist. The mixology because of the alcohol in the room, if you believe it's alcohol, which you don't have to be. You don't have to believe. You don't have to be a part of the woke crowd. You be a part of the not so woke crowd. Sometimes being not so woke is good because if you were woke all the time, you wouldn't be sleeping ever. If you don't sleep, you can't rest. You gotta rest between your conspiracies. Otherwise, I guess we'll be tired. I don't wanna be tired all the time. <laughs> That's why I don't give, go with all those conspiracy theories. Because if I'm woke all the time, then I never get a chance to sleep. That's what it's all about. It's all about resting every once in a while. Otherwise, everyone's angry. Everyone's sad. Everyone's sedangry, I suppose. It's some combination of the two. And actually, this is, this is a little wonky. I'm gonna chop off the top here. Very, very lightly. Trying not to chop into the 3D print itself. And um, also trying not to significantly cut towards myself because that's dangerous. All right, another one. Another little, pop that out as best as I can. There's a tiny little stem down there. And there we go. We have another maple leaf shaped apple core. Is it fancy? Was it, is it an original idea? I have no idea. If it is original, sweet. Please repurpose this as much as you like to. It's not my idea, it's everyone's idea, but it was just formed here. I'll put my apple scraps in a convenient location so I can go snack on them later. But now, 
uh, that's over and done with. Let's not wipe our hands off on the Canadian flag. That's already been spaced. Let's put some scraps to the side and put them in our cocktails. All right, switch that back. Bring them back to the forefront. Where are my yoga blocks? There are my yoga blocks. Hi, yoga blocks. Shall we zoom in? Shall we zoom? Shall we zoom, zoom, zoom? Zoom, zoom, zoom. Zoobity, zoobity, zoob, zoob, zoob. Looks pretty good. Still, still very opaque. Much more opaque than I wanted it to be. But honestly, I think it's a pretty good color gradient. It's not that bad. If I put one kind of in front of the other, a couple of like a, a little mommy, a little daddy. That's not that bad. And now let's put some maple leaves in them. I don't know whether it's gonna look super good, but I'm trying our best here. I don't think it's gonna float. No, it's not gonna float. Ah! You know what? That ain't so bad. That is not that bad, honestly. And I wonder if it'll be a little more visible in this glass. Actually, can I just like, if I can sit that on top, I guess. That's, that's okay. Hey! That's pretty good. That's not that bad at all. That looks pretty good, I think. I mean, it's not the best, but it's a maple leaf in a glass. Canadian whiskey sour. Get maple leaf sour. That's what I'm calling this. All right. I think it's picture time. Excuse me while I take some obligatory pictures. I have a new flow thing. I have a new flow that we got going on here. And uh, the flow is if it looks pretty good, tastes pretty good, we'll post that. Otherwise, we can't be bothered with it, honestly. It's not that bad. It just makes for a little less strenuous experience on my part. Uh, I, I, uh, I hate to say it, but I feel like I'm a pretty in busy individual, and we can't do all the things that we want to do literally all the time, which is sad. It's a very sad life that we live, I suppose. But we get to do at least some of the things that we like to do, at least a portion of the time, which is pretty good. I think that's pretty inspiring. There was somebody who once said, supposedly, that if you get to do 10%, if 10% of your time spent at work is something that you enjoy, you're doing it right. That's the best that you can, like, yeah, that's a really good spot to be in, which sounds really depressing in a way. But like, I mean, if you are enjoying at least a piece of what you're doing and all of it's not a total chore to you, then that's that's a pretty good thing. And I'd say that I'm probably around that 20 to 30% rate right now. All right, so at the end of this adventure that we have, we have what we're calling the Maple Leaf Sour, which was a combination of Canadian whiskey, if you have it, it doesn't have to be Canadian, but it makes it a little more like Canadian, if you're into that kind of business. We have lemon juice in there, and we also have maple syrup. If yours is too viscous, mix it with a little bit of water, make it a little less viscous. You can pour it a little better. Um, the ratios there were one and a half ounces of the whiskey, or 44 milliliters, uh, to half an ounce of lemon juice, or 15 milliliters. The same half an ounce or 15 milliliters of maple syrup, and then if you want to add egg to your an egg to your whiskey sour, then you can crack an egg white in there, dry shake first, then wet shake, mix it all together. If you have a little yolk in it, because you make mistakes sometimes, then that's okay. It'll look a little more opaque. But if you don't, it'll look a little like this. And there is a bit of a crema on the top, which is usually what you get with uh, egg whitey drinks. But um, no, I lost my maple leaf. And we garnished it with a maple leaf shaped apple slice, which. Does it work? I don't really know, but it looks pretty cool. It could definitely be improved upon. So, the egg, potentially mistake, maple leaf sour, smells like, smells whiskey. It's the smell of the whiskey combined with the maple syrup. I'm not getting a lot of like lemon, like lemon juice notes on top of that. It smells good. And I think, I mean, because there's an apple slice literally on top, it smells a little bit like the inside of the apple. Not that bad. Let's give it a taste. Honestly, that tastes delicious. That is very, very delightful. Even though there was a smidge of yolk in there, kind of threw out the color a little bit, it actually gave a little bit of like a, like a dry feel, which is not totally unpleasant. This is actually really cool. It tastes like, it tastes like a whiskey sour in wherein like you get like these like woodsy notes of the whiskey on the inside combined with the lemon juice, but like the maple syrup really rounds things out like excellently. And there's a certain like smooth mouth feel because of the egg that's in there and it's a little drying too because of a little bit of the egg yolk honestly i wouldn't say it's that out of place i wouldn't say it's that bad with a little bit of egg yolk in there it just kind of makes it a little less like yellow on the outside like um like a very like forested yellow this without the egg white or yolk technically looks a little more like what i would imagine like maple syrup combined with whiskey to look like this not so much but this tastes really really good and it's very excellent and i forgot to mention it tastes like maple syrup in the beginning but also it finishes with maple syrup like at the end all i'm tasting is maple syrup and whatever residual dryness is left from the egg and whatever residual dry uh like like 
tinge there still is of the lemon juice in there. It's really good tasting. And it's probably because they used an actual like maple syrup this time. I wouldn't suggest using a butter flavored maple syrup uh, or like Mrs. Butterworth, Aunt Jemima or anything like that. Just my opinion. You might like it, like it like that. It's got a lot of high fructose corn syrup in it, which in my opinion kind of tastes all the same unless you have a bunch of flavoring stuff to it. And it makes it more viscous and difficult to mix. That's just my opinion. I think this came out really good. And the maple syrup that I had, because I guess it was like right from Vermont, um, was very easy to pour. I didn't have to mix anything in it, which means I got the maximum sweetness with absolutely no dilution, which seems like a pretty good trade-off. Now, that's my thoughts on the one with the egg white in it. I don't know if it'll be that much different from the one we didn't add any egg in at all, but that's this guy. Also, pretty much the same, except you didn't, well, we didn't put any egg white in it, so. Definitely a lot more whiskey forward. There is less of a dilution than in this one. This one's a lot more lemon forward where instead of it being like a like a like um like a lemon whiskey combo i think the whiskey comes first and then the lemony part of it comes afterwards the, the maple syrup is still very prevalent there it tastes like maple syrup they both do in a very very good way and i think it really plays well with the uh with the whiskey and the lemon in there now i will say this this one with the egg white i think i got more flavors of the whiskey itself it's it seemed very oaky it seemed almost vanilla like it seemed almost like um like earthy in a way which is not something i've tasted from this whiskey before this particular combination it was maybe there was some interplay going in there with like the egg really brought out the characteristics of the whiskey where in the, the one without the egg white i don't really think it does the job as well then again if i do a side-by-side -side comparison it's very lemony very lemony whiskey -y. and i get the, the maple syrup at the end But this this one it tastes almost like like oh it's almost like a pancake. It's uh, this this seems to me like with the egg white, it is almost like I am drinking a, a like a like a flapjack. That's got some like maple pancakes in it. There's a restaurant up in Vermont called Sugar and Spice that my family absolutely loves to go to when we go up and visit my brother. And they have like maple syrup pancakes, sugar and spice pancakes, and they are absolutely amazing. They taste great. They take the maple syrup and they cook it right into the pancake. You don't even add more on it if you don't want to, uh, but you may want to because their maple syrup is also freshly made there too, and it's absolutely delicious. But it tastes like I'm almost like like drinking into a flapjack. Um, I think it's almost, honestly, between the two, it's still got a lot of lemon there, and it could be less than the lemon, but then again, I'm not a big, I'm not a big sour kind of guy. So if you have a taste palette kind of like mine where you're not that into sour, you could probably do with adding a bit more maple syrup to either of these concoctions, either with the egg or without the egg. Instead of doing half an ounce of lemon juice and half an ounce of maple syrup, I would actually just cut the lemon juice in half, like only a quarter of an ounce. Honestly, I don't think it needs to be any more maple -y. It's got a lot of sweetness in there. And from the research I did previously, most folks just seem to put, a, if they put maple syrup in a drink, they only put like a teaspoon or something. Something. But with half an ounce, it's about three-ish teaspoons, I think. I'm not very up to speed on my conversions there. I think it's very, very tasty. Very, very tasty indeed. And honestly, not a combo that I was thinking I was going to get. This is one that I hope... Um, I have like a collection. I, I have an app on my phone called Recipe Keeper that I use to try to keep track of all the recipes and stuff. I think it's really good. It's no sponsorship. They actually... I tried to reach out to them about asking about potential improvements that they completely... Uh, they pushed me to the side. It made me very sad. I think the dude's name was... Eh, let's not dox people. In any case, um, but I use it to, as a means to be able to add recipes to my to my phone. It's available on Android, iOS, and I think also on Windows as well. Um, but it has a really convenient functionality to be able to scan recipes from book where books where if you have a bunch of recipe books, kind of like I do, I just have an entire like thing of cocktail books that I. I keep for various purposes, usually for cocktail purposes. It's really convenient to be able to take a picture of it, scan that recipe, and add it to a collection and add like all your preferred tags and whatnot later. It's not up to date, but this happened to be the ones that fell through the cracks of ones that I actually put in there and was able to find later. And at some point, I'm going on my family vacation a little bit soon, so I'll kind of be off, I'll be off of this grid, this Twitch grid for like a week or so. I kind of want to do like a little, like a little sit down personal chat thing. But uh, I won't have like all my hardware with me, so I don't know if I'll be able to do that. And if not, that's okay. Lots of love from uh, the southern states in there. And lots of love to everybody out there in general today. If you're from Canada, cool. I really like your flag. D don't take this as a personal attack. I really like the Canadian flag. I like Canadian people. I like Canadian culture and stuff that comes from Canada. And one day I hope to visit as well. My passport is still good. I could be up there tomorrow if I left tonight. But I, but I won't. I have no reason to. I have to work tomorrow. But I am working remotely, so technically I could be in Canada tomorrow. But I, I don't plan on doing that right now. Unless somebody gave me a reason to. I 
would love to have an excuse to visit. Please give me an excuse to visit Canada. In any case, for the rest of the evening, I'll be switching back to the other side of the desk, and I'll be playing some Paper Mario this evening. If that's kind of your shtick in video games and whatnot, this is Twitch, then feel free to stick around. If you don't want to and you came for the cocktails, well, you came at just the right time, because we're ending. And now, you can, you, maybe you can drink this yourself if you're following along. Very good one this time around, but maybe so bold. In any case, thank you everybody so much for coming along. If you joined the party, thank you so much for doing so. If you want to follow, you're more than welcome to. I do cocktails every single Wednesday, and if you're into that kind of stuff, well, 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Wednesdays, that's where we are, that's where we're at, right here. Unless something happens, like the internet goes out or something, but that doesn't usually happen. In any case, thank you everybody so much for watching. If it's the evening where you are, and it is also about 9-ish o'clock p.m., then good evening to you. Have a wonderful one. If the sun is shining where you are, and the sun is high in the sky, rep to sunburn you, watch out. But good afternoon or good morning. To everybody else, good dawn, good twilight, good... Duh. Good insert day here. And to everybody, party on, no matter where you are. Until next time. Bye, everybody. See you on the other side, or goodbye. Goodbye, 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 goodbye. goodbye. Let my mystic power tell of days to come. More as well. Good luck sits on my spell. What do you say, Mr. Guy? Want to give it a try? Yeah. That's good. That's great. Choose your path to fate. Which path do you choose? The cheap one. Okay.